So please, Camillo, the, the stage is yours. Thank you so much and good afternoon. My name is Camilo, and this work titled Stack Overflow Post as Source of Library Features is in collaboration with Eleni Constantino uh, from Eindhoven University of Technology and my promoter, Kunde Ruger. Current software development uh, is usually to use uh, third party libraries functionalities. So, for example, in these code snippets, you can see several APIs that are used to to achieve a certain functionality. More explicitly, this uh, set of APIs uh, are used to achieve, uh, like the name of the method says, to get a PDF uh, from HTML. In another example, you see here uh, that in this case, uh, a file is copied from one location to another to achieve other functionalities. Developers, uh, can use several libraries from software ecosystems. So, for example, the Java software ecosystem uh, called Maven has uh, different libraries targeting uh, several domains, such as dependency injection, XML processing, collections, and so on. And as you can see, there are uh, a vast majority, uh, there is a high number of libraries uh, targeting uh, a single domain. So, for example, in the collections domain, you can infer by the library's descriptions that they are mainly about implementations, about sets, stacks, queues, and maps. But you cannot see from the, from this uh, description of the libraries what are the main features. So these features of these libraries remain hidden to the users. Uh, so it's really hard for them to, to see these features uh, explicitly. Now, the features that I'm talking about is that are these libraries uh, that are targeting collections or they are dealing with some collections are persistent or thread safe? Uh, what are the methods for sorting? What are the methods for reversing? Can how can I uh, can I filter a collection or how can I transform a collection? Moreover, the use of these features is also hidden from the from the users. So, for example, are these features single single method goals? or they are called together as a group of methods, or they are basically a statics or instance method call. And finally, how are these features compared in all of these similar libraries that are targeting uh, the collections domain? Now, um, a feature, uh, because I'm, I'm, I've been speaking about features. So what is a feature? Well, according to Antoniol and Guehenuk, these are a set of data structures such as fields and classes uh, and operations like functions and methods participating in the realization of a functionality. Also, Kanda and colleagues define a feature as a set of API calls with the, cor with the corresponding name. And that's precisely the, the definition that we adopted uh, for our approach, like a set of features that corresponds to a set of API calls uh, with an associated name to them. Now, our, our approach, uh, this is the major overview of our approach, and it basically uh, takes as input uh, a library in his very basic definition as a jar file, like a group ID, an artifact ID, and some uh, answers uh, uh, in, from Stack Overflow that uses this library. And the final output is the set of features that we are able to extract from this uh, from this library. Now, I will I will briefly explain the approach in in the major steps. So, like I mentioned, uh, the input will represent the the group ID and artifact ID, basically uh, the the identifier of this library in the Maven software ecosystem. And then we are able to download the jar files from uh, from the Maven software ecosystem. Now, from Stack Overflow. We uh, collected the answers uh, that uh, have, uh, as part of their tags, the name of the library. So in that way, we have a set of answers for, for the, the library that we are analyzing. Now, the next step is about filtering. And first, we filter out those answers that do not have any code associated with it. So for example, this is an answer uh, about the Weka library. And as you can see, there is no code there. So we, we exclude those answers. Then with, with information that we uh, gather before, like uh, classes and public API uh, methods, we are able to 
we define a, an island parser that is focused on the on the on the API calls, uh, and we are able to use this island parser to extract the information that we are interested in. Uh, this is very convenient here because the thing is that most of the Stack Overflow answers they do not follow uh, a syntactic uh, guideline, so they have syntactical errors, and moreover uh, they um, they can't have a, so for example a proper method or a class definition so that's why we use an island parser instead of a classical answer like eclipse jdt uh, to parse the the code we also extract from the answers the textual information around this code like the description and the title uh, of the post where this happens uh, now with the information from the from the island parser we match that it is indeed uh, the classes and methods extracted from the jar files. Now, with the filter information, we were able to, to define two sets of features, one about textual information and one about API usage information. And in the case of the textual information, uh, is uh, are the, the post titles, the body of the question and body of the answers. And in the case of the API users, so the code, uh, the attributes are method names, and the, the method names divided by camel case, which is the style for Java. And finally, the API calls. So basically, a class name uh, dot the method name. Now, uh, very brief, briefly explain here that uh, for the textual information, we train a TF-IDF model. Something is mentioned about in the, in the previous presentation. Uh, and with this model, we vectorized all the, the, the the textual information in the answers, and then we cosine similarity, we compute the similarities between the vectors. So the final goal here is to obtain a similarity matrix uh, in order to group a set of API usages and to see if they correspond to actual features. In the case of code, uh, we only computed the jacquard similarity between the API uh, usages, uh, so any kind of combination of these attributes we, and then we ch we check whether these clusters are or, or the information that is gathered together it will correspond to features. Now with these similarity matrices, we're able to to train a, a cluster, and in this case we selected um, the hierarchical clustering, and for this uh, you usually have to select a threshold, and this threshold represent will represent a, a coding a cutting point in the dendrogram that is formed. And uh, when you cut uh, the dendrogram, the remaining branches will correspond to the form clusters. And it's depending on this cutting point that you will have uh, the quality of the clusters will depend on this cutting point. And this is a very hard uh, task to do because there is, uh, if, if, you, if you have like a static cutting point, you will uh, probably uh, not be able to to obtain the optimal uh, the optimal clusters, and in that case we have but uh, so our goal is to improve the silhouette score for the form clusters, uh, and to so the silhouette score is symmetric between minus one and one, and the closer to one uh, it means that uh, the, the clusters are more well formed, so they are uh, better distinguished between each other. And instead of, of a static approach, we uh, adopted uh, a, a dynamic approach that is basically pays attention to the similarity between each, between each element and selects the different, different thresholds for each cluster. This is uh, a technique that was proposed some time ago and is basically a dynamic uh, tree cutting and this uh, package is available in, in the R ecosystem. Now, with this, um, we're able to extract clusters that are uh, hopefully more uh, optimized and they group together API usages. But then we need to select those clusters and the ideal cluster for us uh, would be that one in which the a feature is clearly depicted. So each of the clusters will contain API usages and the textual information uh, from these API usages. And uh, we need to we need to see uh, if the API usages are frequent or not. 
So um, we adopted a, a local outlier uh, factor technique that detects this kind of outliers in each of the clusters uh, to select those clusters that contain API usages uh, more frequent than another. For those that uh, do not contain this kind of frequency, we, we exclude them uh, because they are not very prevalent. And also, uh, and a larger step is for the names, to select the name for the clusters, and we analyze the textual information in the API usages within each cluster. And uh, we selected pairs of nouns and verbs, and the frequency of these nouns and verbs are also selected using the local outlier factors. Uh, and this will finally represent the names of the, of the cluster, and hopefully the features, the features, sorry. Uh, so this is an example of our tool. So you can explore, uh, this is the initial uh, clusters that are formed and a set of libraries that we analyze, such as Guava, HTTP client, the free chart, and so, and so on. And uh, you can see some statistics in the, in the tool as well. And for each of the, for each of the clusters, if you go inside each of the cluster, you see, um, the composition of this cluster. And here you can see also the name that was um, uh, recommended in this case. And finally, you see the presence of the classes and methods and the links of the posts that were grouped together. So in this particular case, you see this cluster is about cache and, uh, all, and the, the proposed name is use cache, create cache, store cache, and so on. And as you can see, the posts are very related to each other that are basically about caching uh, in Java. We evaluated our tool and to see how uh, how similar are the, the, the features that we uncover from a Stack Overflow post to document the tutorial features in these libraries. And uh, we obtained uh, a really good accuracy to the features that we are able to extract from tutorials and a, and a nice relevance with respect to the API code that uh, were found in these uh, tutorials. Uh, finally, uh, we also use, um, we also compare uh, the, the features that were uncovered by our tool to API usages in client projects. And we also see a high percentage of, of those usages, of those uh, features, sorry, uh, that were uncovered by our tool that were present in, in GitHub client projects. And also the relevance was uh, also uh, significant. So that means that this, um, that the features that were uncovered by our tool are also present in the API, uh, in the API uh, client projects. Um, finally, to conclude, we focus uh, the, the problem that we are trying to target is to uncover features from a Stack Overflow. So that means that a Stack Overflow is the main uh, source of, of, our, of our features. And we, we design an approach based on this and finally uh, obtain some results that were in correspondence uh, uh, for what we were expecting. So the feature work is mainly related about uh, recommending these kind of features to, to users of this library in the Maven software ecosystem. So thank you so much. Thanks, Hamid. Can you hear me right? Apparently yes. I have a problem with the microphone. Uh, okay. So um, I noticed two questions on this court from Dario. So the first yeah. thing is, have you you try to apply another clustering approach, for example, k-means. Also, in this case, you could find the best k by looking at the silhouette score. So this is the first question. Uh, yes, actually, we evaluated uh, some other clustering techniques, and k-means was uh, one of them. Uh, but the problem with k-means is, yeah, like Dario pointed out, uh, is to select the, the, the right k. Uh, so we didn't find a, a concrete technique or a concrete paper that this was sort of optimized uh, rather than iterating over every K. Uh, so we focus on hierarchical clustering and this dynamic approach that is, it, it basically worked for us. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, thank you. So the second one is how do you assess if a, if a feature is clearly depicted? Uh, yes, in our case, um, we focus on the API that were inside uh, each of the uh, each of uh, each of the clusters. So I don't know if you see well. Each of the cells here in this cluster it, it represents a, a new search uh, within this cluster. So um, if this usage is frequent enough. Uh, then that means that the cluster is uh, is uh, is relevant. Uh, so so uh, we evaluated in the, in this manner and using the local outlier factors that basically detects the 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 most the the most frequent uh, terms in a in a population, and in that way we we were able to detect those clusters where the API usages were frequent. And we focus on those. Uh, probably in the future we will see the others, uh, and and to see what what we can do about it. Uh, but that's basically how how we how we did it. Okay. Uh, I think that Camilo answered at your questions. Any other questions, comments? You can also unmute yourself uh no okay